things that I do on a standard bicycle, I like to bring that over into my motorcycles. I love this, just strip it down and make it as simplistic as possible. Make it unique. Yeah, make, make it, it your unique, own. make it my own. I'm gonna keep on doing it until I can't do it no more. My name is Jake from Prism Supply, and this is our series, My Garage. Today, we're in the heart of Charlotte, North Carolina, at our buddy Dred's spot, Spoke Easy. We're gonna get an insight to Dred's workspace, outside and inside, as well as a little bit about what Spoke Easy does. We are a small bike shop. We're very different than most shops here in Charlotte that stock hundreds of high-end stock bikes. We're more of a custom shop. We do um, custom builds, custom repairs. Mostly vintage stuff or new stuff? Or a little it's bit all over the board. We do vintage bikes, but we also do newer custom builds. We're more into bikes that everyday people ride. You know, you don't have to wear spandex or the kits to, right, to right. come to our shop or get a nice bike from us. I remember the first time coming here and seeing this patio space and being like, wow, this is so impressive because it's in the heart of Charlotte. There's big, tall buildings all around us, but yet you have like this large killer patio space. So tell me a little bit about the patio space and what you guys do here. One of our goals is to have one of the best patios in Charlotte. Um, we wanna be a community hub. So a lot of people come here to have their lunch, cool off, after a ride, maybe read a book and just enjoy the day. One of the greatest things I love is when I come down from my office and the patio, you know, is kind of hopping and you'll see like a 18 year old kid that has, you know, like the saggy jeans and, you know, ripped up t-shirt and then a doctor from the hospital down here and, you know, That's right. you know, a lady in her nice dress, you know, it's just a whole eclectic crowd. You know, Charlotte's a friendly city and we're just trying to nurture that. One of our cool features on our patio that I love is our archway right here. Most people don't realize this is all made of bike frames. That's and, awesome. And um, I actually didn't even notice that because it's so, yep. it's got so much growth on it. So I also see like there's killer artwork everywhere in this place. Obviously, like you're super into art. Tell us a little bit about where your inspiration comes from for this art. Do people come to you and say, hey, I want to paint something on your wall? What does that look like? My two partners and me, we're all architects. So we have a, a design background. So we're really into art. Every once in a while, we'll have somebody paint a panel and we'll hang it in the shop or panels on the back wall and in the patio. We just love to celebrate artists and showcase their art. I really like this old print mm -hmm. from, it's a reproduction print from 1923. It, that's crazy, but it like, you gotta think, this was all done by hand. Exactly. Whoever was designing this, they didn't have a computer or anything, so all this was hand sketch, which I'm sure you really appreciate from a architectural perspective. This actually came from my son. He got me four prints of Harley Patton's remakes of them. They're placed, you know, sporadically around the shop, but I really love this one and love the hand-drawn aspect of uh -huh. it. And, uh, you know, it's not just a piece of machinery, it looks like a piece of art. Give us a rundown of, of your bike here. It started out as a 97 Heritage Classic. Uh, Obviously it doesn't look like that anymore. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally stripped it down, no extras on it. You know, just what you need to get down the street. That's right. It's crazy how much this bike has transitioned because it was a stock looking bike before this and you've done all this work to simplify it and make it look clean and, and classic. Things that I do on a standard bicycle, I like to bring that over into my motorcycles. I love this, just strip it down and make it as simplistic as possible. Make it unique. Yeah, make, make it, it your unique, own. make it my own. I'm gonna keep on doing it until I can't do it no more. You're a heavy bicycle enthusiast, a community enthusiast. I know that you love motorcycles as well, and that's evident throughout the space. My whole life, I've always been a two-wheel enthusiast. I started racing bikes at seven, and at that age, I fell in love with dirt bikes too. You know, our family couldn't afford the motorcycles at the time, but I was always riding my friend's motorcycles. When I finally got out of school and was able to afford my first bike, it was a CB350. Just ripped on that until I got out of college, started a family. What is it that you love about a Harley? I love anything with culture. I love uh. continuing that culture. It doesn't matter what style you ride or even like when I first met you guys, you know, I came in with my 97 Evo and yeah, you yeah. guys, you know, you guys never like, oh, you know, that's not a 54 or <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not a panhead, you know, get out of here. <laughs> you know, you guys brought me in, part of the community and you know, we've been friends ever since that's and right. I love it. That's yeah. right. So that's what I love about cycling and that's what I love about motorcycles. Dredd, how'd you get the nickname Dredd? That's a funny story, it's not a nickname. My name is Dredd Fire. You were born into your hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what came first, the chicken or the egg? That's always my question. Like, did the hair or the name come first? Nothing to do with dreadlocks. Nothing Thanks. to do with dreadlocks. I'm a Rastafarian. 
uh -huh. and dread is a term of a endearment in the Rasta community. Dread means God-fearing, and faya is the Patois word for fire. So basically, my name means earth cool. with the fear of God in you. That's awesome. Yeah, so. This is like an old 80s, 90s Survivor road bike. It looks like it's in incredible condition. We love our bikes to be period correct, be as original as possible, and that's, that's cool. what this is. This is a 1990 Specialized Allay. This is before they figured out how to bond carbon together. Uh, so it has like that all classic these joints look. Are. Yep, these are called huh. lugs. This is a carbon aluminum lugged bike. That's the only way they could figure out how to connect carbon tubes together back in the day. This was one of the first models ever made that way. This would be my favorite station right here is my wheel building station, my truing stand, and my spoke wrenches. Wheel building is like my meditation. It's where I get real zen. Huh. You know, I lock myself in, fine tune it. Which is very similar to a motorcycle yep, wheel. Very That's similar, it's just a smaller scale. That's right. Yep. Spend many hours either standing here or sitting down at the bench, knocking out wheels. Tell me about this bike. Obviously, uh, looks like a, a custom job. What was it for? Yeah, Why'd you guys do it? This is definitely a full custom. As you can <laughs> see, it's two bikes put into one. The lower frame was a Schwinn. The upper frame is a old classic Huffy. And we married them both together, which <laughs> is called a tall bike. The it, idea around a tall bike is to make it as ridiculous as possible and as tall as possible. I mean, we've seen people make them three high, four high, tandemed out, you know, double seated. And this one was made by one of our local friends. His name is John Poe. He's the welder. Uh, I can see it right there. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Do you think I can ride it? Oh, you could definitely ride this. Really? Seems like it'd be tough to balance. Like, so. nah, once you get going, it's just like riding a bike. <laughs> you just gotta, you just gotta send it. You just gotta you commit to it. You just gotta commit. Just to like it. riding a bike. All right, Jed. So you've obviously built this incredible community. You built this awesome bicycle shop, bar, retail space. You're you're an architect. What's next for you? Me and my partners, our goal for this shop moving forward is we're trying to change the idea of what a bike shop is or was. We're trying to build a community around cycling. And it's not just coming to the bike shop to get your bike worked on, but also being you know, involved in architecture too. One of the things here in Charlotte they're doing is building communities that don't allow cars. There's a certain dollar value that goes to having a parking space. So now these apartment complexes have to up your rent that much to accommodate for the parking spaces. So to get rid of parking spaces, you can have more affordable living. That's right. That makes um, sense. So we're in the forefront of that, of outfitting um, these apartment buildings with bike rooms, bike garages. So that you see the future of Spoke Easy is like, being more plugged into the local neighborhoods, the local mm -hmm. communities. That's what we're building to, and we're actually working at this right now. And we do a lot of events with a lot of the big corporate companies uptown where they do um, team building events uh -huh. or company picnics, things like that. And we'll set up there and we'll give them free tune-ups. It's just building the community around bikes and making sure people feel safe commuting and getting around by bike and know how to do it. <laughs> You have an incredible space. You're doing awesome things as a business, also as a community. We're thankful for you to be a part of this local Charlotte community. Yeah. Thanks for all you do. Where can we find you? Um, you can find us in three spots on social okay. media. You can find us on Instagram at the Spookeasy CLT. Okay. You can find us on Facebook at the Spookeasy CLT and our website, Spookeasy, Spookeasy CLT. Perfect. There you go. Don't pull up too hard, you'll do a wheelie.